it is a lie that you can't grow without a degree the focus should be maximum on learning and exposure recruiters and hiring managers actually want to select people yeah, because they want to hire people. This is Sachin. This is Bharat. This is Omkar. My name is Manan Verma. And I'm Kechan. Append, you know, to your name, the kind of role that you are caring for. That is wherever you want to be. The majority of the people that I've seen who have not done fairly well or who have not been fair to their careers, one thing I've seen very prominently is that they don't have a sense of you know delayed gratification. You know, if I compare career building similar to let's say you know investing in stock market, so you can time it probably once or twice in in your career, but then if you look at it from a long career point of view, it doesn't really matter. So I'm somebody who did which you know early in my career. You know, had I reached where I've reached. without those switches i think would have done pretty much same so i think delayed gratification is something very important second is curiosity what what we measure is the intent and capability of people in the initial part of your career the focus should be maximum on learning and exposure rather than on convenience and comfort and if you really enjoying what you're doing then you will not actually feel the pain because a lot of people have never worked outside they think that you know it's very comfortable to work from from home then why to even go to office and meet any anybody else but once they actually do it then they realize oh this was such a stark difference between what i was imagining a workplace to be and what it is uh, actually all about and also the leader you will be uh, like working closely with because you will be absorbing a lot of things from him or her and uh, i personally I, i call myself a byproduct of all the leaders i worked with i just came to an in, in, in industry n- nothing uh, on my mind learn something from my college professors and uh, post that i've been just learning from the people who were my oversight and some internet resources so the person you will be working with closely is something very important So when I look at the resume, so like as uh, Nikhil also mentioned, and Omkar also mentioned, we get like hardly thirty to sixty seconds on an average to process a resume. So it has to be the first impression also matters. The first thing is relevant experience. So the skills should stand out immediately, not just the project that you have worked on. It should be less about the projects you have worked on, but it should be more about your contributions to that project. That is the first thing. The second thing is also look at the the number of companies that a person has worked on, uh, the kind of switch they are making. Uh, is it too soon? Is it too long? And the kind of people that we would want in our team. That is the second thing. Third thing, which everybody looks for, is is the person going to improve the quality of the team? Whether it is by the project that they worked on, their educational background, it could also be because of the hobbies. So these days, you have a lot of things that you can do to make your resume stand out. You can have your GitHub contributions, your public profiles, your website. You could have participated in different hackathons, won certain prizes there, or you could have like, in your current organizations, you could have uh, done certain initiatives, you could have won certain awards in your organization. So what are those extra things that really give you an edge over other candidates? If you are seeing that you are applying to thirty, forty jobs and you're not getting shortlisted. and you are meeting the whole you know tech stack and experience and everything else but still not getting shortlisted it is most likely to do something around the depth of your resume rather than your breadth you are able to cover the breadth but you're not able to really give an impression to the recruiter that you have what the the the, the company needs and the biggest clue that you have to figure it out is a jd and people don't read the jd so if the cover letter is very tailored to our company that means the candidate has done the research and you are really interested in applying to that particular role versus if it is a generic cover letter uh, which can be forwarded to like 100 different companies that shows the interest level and uh, you have a less likelihood of getting shortlisted uh, depth does not mean having multiple pages of resume depth means the quality of, of resume and in chris mentioning what do you really want to convey that is one and i think uh, uh, the past experience uh, also matters uh, detailing it out properly in lesser amount of words i mean resume max can be two pages at max ideal uh, resume length is one page to be very honest uh, so this means that recruiters or hiring managers look at a cv only for 15 to 30 seconds is not true when you want to reject or basically you know it's a poorly formatted a uh, cv which is which you want to you know looking at rejection i think then that rule applies otherwise i think you know if you like a resume you actually as as ketch it on the side right we want we spend time on figuring out the fitment unless it's a fresher you know we don't really spend or don't really encourage writing hobbies and all that across career ladders across you know seniority levels people end up talking about product more than their engineering work right that this is 
hmm. what I've done uh, right this is how product was improved but you know what I want to hear from developers from engineers is what was the engineering complexity why was it you know complicated so it, hmm. it's not only about explaining us the product enhancement I think that probably does does help a lot adding like a uh, hundred things in a resume is not a good idea at all because then the recruiter can't figure out that you know what is your specialty what is your expertise you can't have expertise in hundred things but you can ex- have expertise in let's say five things or seven things but yeah. not more than that for sure yes let's say you put everything on your resume and you get past the recruiter screen recruiter shortlisted the person they talked and it looks like you know the person has the skills and you are moved to the next round which is the tech check your tech interview or it could be a coding test or uh, it could be a take home assignment or whatever right so in the interview uh, round especially yeah now you're in trouble because now you have written <laughs> too many things right any candidate is not able to justify their resume a lot of kind customers they drop the candidate that is one of the thing that i have seen across almost 75% 80% of the customers It is a good practice for candidates to ask upfront that what what is going to be expected in an interview. Are there any specific skills that I would be interviewed on? Because see, as I see it, right, you study for exams. Uh, interview is also one kind of exam. So why not ask upfront and pre- better prepare yourself? That will increase your chance of clearing an interview, right? Because you get an opportunity to prepare yourself for an interview. And and again, it is not a function of one interview. In one conversation, it's very difficult to pick out all signals. So the the panel coordinates within you know amongst each other on verifying, validating basically the thesis of each skill set, be it technical or uh, you know behavioral. I think one thing that people don't do uh, in a tech interviews is they are just in a passive mode. They think a company is going to assess them and they're just going to get assessed. They don't take the opportunity of understanding the hiring side. That what are the what are the company's problems? What kind of architecture they have right now? What are the problems they're trying to solve? And why did they actually need to hire? Why they're hiring you? What is the problem that you're supposed to solve? Uh, they don't do this. They think it's their time will come later after they have proven everything. Then they will ask questions. But you will not get time to ask those questions because by the, by the time your interviews are over, it will be a very short span of time where you have, have to decide about the company. So why you need to ask these questions about the company also is because once you understand their pain points, you understand the role, you understand the architecture, and why they are hiring you. you will be able to actually not only understand whether you want to join this company or not but also it will help you in pitching your skills and selling yourself better you now this candidate actually is can be a problem solver for me and people don't understand that people just say okay i am a box take me or leave it but you're not a box you are a human and you can understand and sense the situation and it will be also great help for you in the salary negotiation round as well let's say your interview has not gone that great up when i say not great on a Uh, if expected scale is eight out of ten, and uh, you know the score has been seven, uh, I think a lot of these conversations, you know how active you are uh, communicating, does help a lot, right? Because I think all of us do understand that again, interviews are a proxy of your skills. There is no way that any of us can, you know, assess any anybody in uh, let's say in a matter of three hours. It's just not possible. Let's say at the start of the process, candidate said, "Look, I am looking for one X." and suddenly that 1x becomes 2x right or 3x for that matter so that's where a recruiter goes in a question mark that at the beginning of the process this is what I was quoted how suddenly uh, this became uh, double or triple or whatever it is right if candidates are opting uh, opting for startups rather than you just uh, doubling down or tripling or whatever right just on salary uh, they should also look at wealth creation options so let's say if you're getting something less but if there is a wealth creation option by wealth creation option what i mean is your esops rsus sas right so even if you're getting a balanced hike on the compensation don't be hell bent that i want an aggressive one instead of try asking that is there a wealth creation option in your company the whole salary part is i think it should not be a surprise till the end i think this also is an important part from i think increasingly understood from the company side as well Absolutely. in a market like this right companies also want to not waste the time right Absolutely. because by the time the whole interview process has happened uh, a lot of man hours and you know opportunities have been wasted on both Absolutely. sides at, at least 3 to 4 uh, engineering hours rather than man hours i'll call them as engineering hours Uh, are more premium, right? Super human hours, right? So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you believe the range that was told to you 
by the company or did you know that there is always a buffer if i perform better i can always ask for more there is a like a base range which like every organization operates at and there are certain bands to like a different different uh, uh, job role but uh, there are outliers and i've always seen uh, like uh, in organization there are certain people who uh, outperform and get compensated in a better way as well uh, as per the organization uh, procedures uh, it, it could be a, a different wealth creation opportunity via awarding more resources or, or, or in, in in that direction and uh, as a person interviewing you need to maximize on like uh, uh, how much uh, you need to make and uh, how you can convince them that you are the right person so it's there is a range in a particular industry for all particular roles right there can be difference of organized uh, there can be a slight variation or difference of uh, organization to organization but it cannot be not north pole and south pole at a particular experience level or a particular role right so that and uh, that is to be honest out in the market so candidates should study that what about for a particular role what is the industry range so we did this poll and a uh, lot of people believe that companies try to pay less than the budget they have right so there is some sort of distrust or maybe lack of clear expectations set from both sides largely they'll try to be in the budget because see understand if, if they go beyond budget their cash flows will hamper one and if they pay under budget then there will be parity concerns within within the organization at some point in time right so they'll try to fit uh, fit to a budget and budget is a, is a is fairly a larger range uh, it is not just a, a difference of a lakh or a two lakh there is a fair amount of difference or or a distance in a in a particular range that is defined if companies are uh, but they then if they are underpaying you then they have a risk that you know the recruiter has a risk that you know you will switch job within the next six months once you join in you will know that you know that this was not the budget range and uh, you know the company is not doing a, a fair job to you and then they lose a risk of lose they have a risk of losing you and you can go to some other company and then the company is back in the market looking for uh, a replacement and to be very honest hiring is very costly hiring a developer at least is really really costly so no company at least any smart recruiter would not want to go through the pain of that and they would want to save their time make their life easy and actually help the company grow rather than uh, uh, spending saving 1 lakh rupees now and then spending more money than that in hiring again if you think you are an outlier prove that you are an outlier and if they believe that you are an outlier then maybe there is some more a uh, room for them to go beyond the budget but then as parat identified and said earlier have this thing as one of the factors don't unless i see a lot of people really taking it as a you know some sort of a ego signal or uh, a peer comparison point that i am earning you know more than other people in my peer group or my from my, uh, or compared to my cousins and they just go in the ctc maximization kind of a spree uh, that becomes a whole objective but understand that when you're planning your career uh, you're planning for a lot of things and this is just one of the things so don't leave a good opportunity just because you, somebody's paying you more three or four lakhs or two lakhs more yeah. uh, no it will really not make a lot of difference you get four or five companies offers and all of that you accept one offer because a recruiter or a company was really pressing you you make the mistake of accepting because you do not want to lose out on the offer then uh, some other company comes you continue to talk to them which is something that a lot of people do today it is something which is a, a big debate right now on linkedin as well uh, but i and i think uh, there is no clear solution no you know uh, no uh, no side to blame for this but i think both sides understand that you are optimizing for your career uh, and uh while you might want to you know look for opportunities what people don't want you to do is accept and don't tell them until the last minute uh when you accept first of all don't only accept when you are you know sure about joining don't accept under pressure it's all relationships that will take you far in your career it's not just going to be just one one off thing that you will pull off when you're going to be in an ecosystem and as you go up as you ex- get more experience the ecosystem is going to become more sparse you're going to be dealing with more people who you have met before and if you don't manage these relationships well then you're going to have uncomfortable conversations or situations in your life later on uh, so up op- again okay, optimize for long term let's play for the long term let's build for the knowledge and let's build for the ecosystem and you know have a network of professionalism Uh, and tradition and and the uh, history of uh, profession that will take you far 
first thing have a career goal in mind like what do you want to pick up in the next year or five years start focusing on skills uh, that would get you there start looking at companies that can get you there projects that you can do in your current organization that can get you there uh, rather than opt like uh, optimizing for short term salary taking a salary high raises and switching so while focusing on like when, when you look at short term you end up compromising on your long term goals so that will be really bad for your long term career just like these three things plan your career and uh, not just from a short term perspective from a long term perspective put time or give time and prepare yourself for that long term journey that uh, that you are envis- envisaging right put in put in those efforts and give it out or your all on the from the learning standpoint which can help you achieve your long term goal you know don't take too much tension to be very honest that is something that we have not covered but yes don't take too much tension Just always focus on learning always focus on your basics and things will fold in the right manner in the long term Uh, I have seen a lot of people getting hey you know I didn't get shortlisted by this company or flana flana but you know in the long term uh, in the long scheme of things you will do a uh, good if you have the right mindset so in case you feel that you are not at the one year colleges and you want to focus like you can focus on some other areas like focus on your project maybe take a certain online courses have your public profiles or really showcase that you have really performed in your current role like if you are working in your current organization showcase growth like you have done multiple you've gotten multiple promotions in the last one or two years to showcase that you are really a performer mm-hmm.